Hello. This is an exposition of Psalm 121 that I gave recently at the funeral of Rosemary Flack. Rosemary is our lady worker in Farnham and had spent uh, 25 years of her life uh, as a nurse serving the Lord in Peru. The psalm reads like this. I lift my eyes to the hills or to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. I lift my eyes to the hills. When you think of Peru, you think of the Andes Mountains, don't you? Especially that large one, Machu Picchu, 3,000 metres tall. You think of its Inca citadel at the top. Now imagine looking up to a range of mountains. The weather is hot, you're longing for rain clouds, or maybe you can just make out some marauding robbers up there causing mischief. Well, the psalmist is also looking to the hills, and up in the mountains it looks quite frightening. Think of those who get lost there. Think of the menace of robbers hiding in the hills. You get it in the story of the Good Samaritan, don't you? As the man hid amongst the uh, hills, as the as the walker comes down from Jericho to Jerusalem. Well, in Israel, to look to the hills probably meant looking to the hill of Jerusalem. Because at the top of that great hill of Jerusalem, there was the temple. And since this is part of a number of songs that uh, pilgrims use as they went up to worship at the temple, maybe they too felt life was hard, life was tough. You needed some inspiration. Would I find it at the top of Jerusalem's hill? Well, what I will find when I get there is the Lord. L-O-R-D, capital letters, the maker of heaven and earth. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Now, this isn't his usual name, Lord. His usual name is God the Almighty. This name is his personal name. It's his covenant name, as we call it. It's I am. When Moses asked, who should I say sent me? He said, said say, I am uh, sent you. Moses knew God personally. He could talk with him. David also knows God personally. He knows that God is at home in his temple. And if God is at home in his temple, all is well with the world. Because these hills around Jerusalem, indeed the hills around the whole world, are all his doing. You might think that they've just blown up and evolved over the years with eruptions and so on and volcanic movement. True. But who made them? Who, who, who developed that whole process? Who put them there? God is the maker. I lift my eyes to the hills. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Well, not only is God the maker... The psalmist wants to stress that he's also the protector. Because one thing we realise when we consider God is that he is a good God. He will protect me, watch over me. He doesn't need to sleep as I do. Look at the number of times the psalmist says he watches. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Now it's a very interesting way of describing God, watching, watching, watching. But do you see what the psalmist is doing? He's first of all talking to himself. He says, I lift my eye to the hills. Where does my help come from? And then he says to himself, 
in verse 2 himself. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now, I know it's a dangerous thing to do, to talk to yourself. It's a sign that we've arrived at geriatrics corner. Senility has set in. But it's sometimes good to take ourselves in hand and ask some basic questions. Where does my help come from? Who actually looks after me? And having made sure he knows the answer, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, he talks to his fellow pilgrims. He will not let your foot slip. The Lord watches over you. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He's talking to his fellow pilgrims. Well, the Lord watches over you. The Lord won't let your foot slip. Is that right? Didn't Rosemary slip in the Santa Teresa mountain area and break her ankle at 11,000 feet? Didn't she have cancer three times? How can the Bible say he will not let your foot slip? It's a good question, isn't it? Well, first of all, we have to say the psalmist is expressing his feelings here in poetic form. Stressing that God looks after us. My help comes from the Lord. Indeed, he will not let your foot slip. Could be translated as a prayer. Please, Lord, do not let my foot slip. Now, the stress here is on the protection, the way God guards me. This is a fragile earth. This is a broken earth. But God the creator looks after his own. That doesn't mean to say we won't have troubles here. But it means that in the long term, overall, into the next life, we are secure. So we have to put these promises that you find in this psalm, together with all the other promises in scripture. We need to show the greatness of God in protecting his people from harm and evil. We mustn't so be, so be so tied to what we think is the perfect life with no tumbles, no illnesses, no hospitals, no death. This side of glory. As I say, the stress is on God. The God who looks out after his own. The God who doesn't fall asleep. But at the same time, life is fragile. And ultimate protection is only found in glory. On earth there are thorns and thistles, rocks and hard places, broken bones and cancers. In glory there's none of that. What is clear from the psalmist is that God is with me. His arms are around me. He takes me through life's difficulties. Not so much cushioning me from them, but arming me well to cope with them. He will take me on to glory. So if God takes such care of me, my trust in him is certainly not misplaced, is it? But don't throw God out just because you've had a fall, will you? God is the creator, the maker. God is the protector who watches over us. The psalmist now develops by saying God is our partner, the partner. Because as the song develops, so does the intensity of God's watch. In verse 3, he will not slumber. In verse 4, he will not slumber or sleep. In verse 5, he watches over you. He is your shade at your right hand. It's intensified in 6. The sun is there to protect you. By day and the moon at night. By verse 7, The Lord will keep you from all harm, watching over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. Entry into the world and entry out of the world. He watches over everything. God comes alongside his children. He walks with us. He's our partner. That's the sort of brilliant God we have. The God who can take care of the nation and the God who can take care of you and me, the individual. But... Any good Jewish person could say all of that. How is it for believers in Jesus to say this? Well, Jesus sang this song too, you know. He would have been a good Jewish boy, good Jewish young man. He would have gone to the synagogue. This would be one of the Psalms. He would have read it and sung it. And he lifted his eyes to the hills also. 
And if he did that, so can we. So let's just think as we close about Jesus, the eye lifter. E-Y-E, lifter. Jesus lifts my eyes to the hills. You see, he would have sung this song as he went to Jerusalem to worship with the other pilgrims. In fact, his whole life was a journey to Jerusalem, wasn't it? He would have lifted his eyes on many occasions to his father in prayer. He would know how the father had his arm around him so that his foot would not slip and that he would be kept from harm. Yes, he would also look to the hill of Jerusalem and know that he would die on it, die for his people, die for their rebellious nature, die eternally so that they would not have to. And that's where our trust should be, shouldn't it? Looking upwards every day to the hills. That's where our help comes from, from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord who sent his son for our rescue. The Lord who calls us to lay down our arms and embrace him. And he calls on us to be his fellow pilgrims, to start walking in Jesus' footsteps, sharing the same confidence as our Lord Jesus, that God would not let our foot slip. He will keep us from all evil. That's what Rosemary did. She walked in Jesus' footsteps. And it's what she would want each of us to do. Whether it's hilly or whether it's risky, she was sure that God had a far better home for her, where her foot could never slip. Is that the home that you're going to? Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the hills and mountains, indeed for all of your creation that points to you a creator, a good creator. And in the fear in the hills, the fear of life in the hills, we thank you that Jesus died on Jerusalem's hill. He died so that we might not. Please, Father, may Jesus watch over us, help us to truly trust him this day and every day forward, for we pray in his name. Amen. Thank you for joining me in Psalm 121.